Let us join our voices, more especially let us join our hearts together in the Christmas Creed from Latin America. I believe in Jesus Christ and in the power of the gospel begun in Bethlehem. I believe in the one whose spirit glorified a small village, of whose coming shepherds saw the sign, and for whom there was no room at the inn. I believe in the one whose life changed the course of history, over whom the rulers of the earth had no power, and who was not understood by the proud. I believe in the one to whom the oppressed, the discouraged, the afflicted, the sick, the blind, the injured gave welcome and accepted as Lord and Savior. I believe in the one who, with love, changed the hearts of the proud and with his life showed it is better to serve than to be served and that the greatest joy is giving your life for others. I believe in peace, which is not the absence of war, but justice among all people and nations and love among all. I believe in reconciliation, forgiveness, and the transforming power of the gospel. I believe that Christmas is strength and power and that this world can change if with humility and faith we kneel before the manger. I believe that I must be the first one to do so. You may be seated, church. So Frederick Nietzsche, the philosopher, sometime nihilist and critic of Christianity, Nietzsche complained that the trouble with Christians is that they don't look redeemed. Wishing very much not to resemble that remark, may I remind you that this is our night of nights, that tonight is our night to look redeemed. And if we can't look redeemed tonight, we're done for. I suggest, therefore, that we practice looking redeemed, and here's how to do it. On the count of three, turn to somebody right next to you, look them in the eye, and point to them. You're allowed to point. Point to them and say, you look redeemed. Ready? One, two, three, go. It worked. Well done. You do indeed look redeemed. Phew. The welcome to Old South Church on this Christmas Eve, welcome to friend and to stranger, to the lost and to the found, to the rich and to the poor. Welcome to you who know what it is to be redeemed and you who still ache to know. Welcome to you who are joining us via live stream, wherever you are, we're thrilled to have you with us as well. Welcome to all who have come to gather under the spell of God's best gift to us, a child like no other, Emmanuel. Welcome to Old South Church this Christmas Eve.
The prophet Isaiah foretells the reign of the Prince of Peace. The people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them has the light shone. For unto us a child is given, for unto us a child is born, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Author, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. He will rule as David's successor, basing his power upon right and justice. From now until the end of time, for the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Thanks be to God.
angel Gabriel salutes the Virgin Mary. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. But she was much perplexed by the, his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Thanks be to God.
St. Luke tells of the birth of Jesus. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. <clears throat> Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for Mary to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest heaven, and on earth peace, peace among those whom God favors. Thanks be to God.
the Christmas carol we are about to sing, What Child Is This?, asks the central question of this night, of tomorrow, of Christmas Day, the question at the heart of our gift giving and our family gatherings, what child is this? What child is this who has brought the whole world to a hushed halt? What child is this, born two millennia ago, born a peasant in an occupied country, sentenced to an excruciating, humiliating death, who so commands our reverence? What child is this who inspires the world's finest artists, painters and poets, musicians and sculptors, architects and composers to incomparable heights of artistic and spiritual achievement? What child is this who challenges our too easy accommodations to war and violence? What child is this who in defiance of our warring and our wall building and our vain nationalisms cries out from the very throne of heaven, peace, peace and goodwill over all the earth. What child is this who judges us not by what we own nor by the power we wield over others, but by our capacity for kindness, by our compassion for the poor of the earth, by our appreciation for the plight of prisoner and refugee. What child is this on whose birthday governments and businesses, indeed whole countries, suspend production and cease commerce? What child is this? What child is this who meets and melts haughty human pride with fires forged of divine forgiveness? What child is this, Middle Eastern and Jewish, by whom time itself has been divided? What child is this of reduced means, without property, lacking in any of the kinds of credentials by which we measure ourselves and each other, yet whose moral excellence and spiritual brilliance have redefined what it means to be a full, whole, evolved human being? What child is this? for whom you've come here tonight, many of you anyway, hoping to catch even a glimpse. The Christmas carol we are about to sing asks the central question, the only question of this night, what child is this? In the carol, the question is rhetorical, asked and answered. For the author, for William Dix, who wrote the carol in 1865, who penned the words from a personal circumstance of in extremis. For him, the question was rhetorical, asked and answered. But you, what of you? How do you answer the question? What child is this? for you, for you, good Christian. What child is this for how you live your life, for how you face your own dying, for how you regard others, friend and enemy? For you, good Christian, the question tonight what child is this?
please be seated. The Eastern visitors are led by a star to Jesus. In the time of King Herod, wise men from the East came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observe his star at its rising and have come to pay him respect. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened. Calling together all the religious leaders, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem. They set out toward Bethlehem following the star. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, and they knelt down to honor him. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Thanks be to God.
It is an unofficial minister duty, I think, to be something of a religious Scrooge. We're supposed to scold people for thinking more about presents and parties and travel plans than about Christ. We're supposed to, not so subtly, let it be known that if, if you are stressed about the company that's coming or, or you know, will so-and-so like their gift? If, if you are stressed about the wrapping and the baking that is still not done, about the, the dollhouse or the bicycle that is still not built, well, then it's your own fault for forgetting that Jesus is the reason for the season. <laughs> I confess, while I do love me some sweet baby Jesus, I'm a sucker for the schmaltzy carols and the cheesy songs, and speaking of cheesy, for the cheese platters and cheese logs and cheese balls that appear at all the open houses in this time of year. I love the, the sweaters with big knit reindeer that grandmas wear. I love the lights. I love the department store windows. I love the dinners, the cookies, the gifts, the Santas crying through, it's a wonderful life again. <laughs> Probably I should bewail the commercialism and sentimentality and whatnot, but the Lord knows this world needs all the goodness and all the gladness, all the small kindnesses, all the light and warmth and generosity. And look, we need all the love and all the joy we can get. So spread the joy, share the love, and start it now. Let the Christmas offering be given and received.
Let us pray. On this glad night, mindful of our countless blessings, of the gifts of the Christ child, the hope, the joy, and the peace, and the love in our lives, mindful of this, we thank you, O God. Receive now these humble offerings as signs of our deep gratitude. By your Spirit, make them to be more than what they are. May our own gifts bring Christmas hope and joy and peace and love to all those who would long for blessing. Through Christ we pray. Amen. be seated. A few words of instruction before we begin passing the Christ light. To avoid any Griswold style blunders and burns that will leave you spending Christmas Eve in the emergency room, when passing the light, the person with the unlit candle should dip theirs toward the flame of the lit candle. A lit candle should never be tipped. Keep it upright. 
Ushers are ready with fire blankets and extinguishers. Signal for help if you need it. Try not to need it. After we sing Silent Night, the lights in the sanctuary will come up. Please extinguish your candle before standing to sing the final carol. Receive now the light of Christ that it might grow and grow in the world as it grows in this place. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness God called night and there was evening and there was morning the first day the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light those who lived in a land of deep darkness on them light has shined I am the light of the world Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. You are the light of the world. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to God Almighty. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become children of light. After Jesus had said this, he departed and hid from them. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of the darkness, who is shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light.
please extinguish your candles. In the name of the Christ child, shun the hollow, hallow the good. Forgive those who wound you and wound not in return. Encourage the discouraged, cherish times with the lonely, pray in private crannies about all things, be found celebrating, practice rejoicing, encourage laughter in your soul, and by all means, and for Christ's sake, look redeemed. Merry Christmas.